Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards on the dollar. I'm David and this is my oracle, Ruud. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a fun and effective EDH deck you can build without breaking the bank. Now today's deck is going to be all about putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures. That's, yeah, yeah that's it. That's it, yeah. There's one additional build rule, as with all our decks, all cards need to be under a dollar in price, with the exception of the commander. But before we move on to the commander, we have something to say. Exactly. We, we like to let you know that you can actually become a patron of Budget MTG Decks for as little as a dollar a month. You can really help us out in making more of these videos. We do, of course, a lot of other types of videos, but for the Commander videos, we've got Modern videos, we've got Top 5 videos, we've got Infinite Combo videos. If you want to help us make more of those videos, go over to patreon.com slash Budget MTG Decks and consider helping us out. It would really mean a lot. Now we can get started with our commander, and that is Hapatra Vizier of Poisons. For a black and a green, we get a 2-2 human cleric with, of course, an awesome ability because we get commanders with awesome abilities here on this channel. Whenever Hapatra Vizier of Poisons deals combat damage to a player, we're going to be able to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Pretty sweet. We can be able to kill those utility creatures if she gets through, for example. Additionally, Whenever we put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature, we're gonna be able to create a one, one snake creature token with death touch. Okay, super cool. That means that we're gonna be killing stuff and we're gonna be getting uh, one, one death toucher. So what is gonna be the role of the commander? It's gonna to be to attack, to remove utility creatures, for example, and it's also going to be creating a army of death touching snakes. Root, to make this work, so this actually works properly, what kind of cards do we need? Like we said before, this deck is mostly about putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures and getting value from that, getting a special support for that. So we have 19 cards that put minus one, minus one counters on creatures. We have 14 support cards, 10 utility cards, 17 value cards, the cards that are good with minus one counters again, and of course, 39 lands we need them. Yeah, exactly. Now we're going to move on to the ideal turn progression. Turn one, we might have some removal. Sometimes you have a commander that's just one mana. You can use some removal in this deck. Turn two, we will cast a commander, pretty much always. At turn three, we have some ramp cards, some mana rocks. Turn four, maybe something that makes Hapatra unblockable, because it really helps her uh, to get through and put those minus one, minus one counters on stuff. Then turn five, uh, stuff with minus one, minus one counters. And turn six onward, we have draw and more minus one, minus one counters and support or value with those minus one, minus one counters. Exactly. So now let's get started with the most important part of the deck, and that is the minus one, minus one counters. We divided this category into three sections. The first one is the ones that give minus one, minus one counters. The second one is cards with wither. And the third one is cards with infect. All right, let's get started with the counters first. First card is glistening oil for two black. We get an enchantment aura and enchanted creature has infect. Okay, pretty cool. This deck does have some infect creature, so we could kill somebody with effect by putting this on our own creature. However, usually we're gonna be placing it on an opponent's creature. Why? Because it also states that at the beginning of your upkeep, we're gonna put a minus one, minus one counter on enchanted creature. So that means that every turn, if it's a big creature, we're gonna be able to get a one, one death touch snake for this uh, if Hapatra is out. Additionally, when this card is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we're going to be able to return it back to our hand. So that's cool. So it's kind of like a slow removal that also gives us little snakes. And then when it's done killing the thing that we put it on, we're going to get it back. We can recast it and put it on another creature and start the whole process all over again. So it's kind of does a dual rule in this deck. Really, really good card. Now we have Bane Whip Punisher for three months, it's a 2 2 human advisor. And when it enters the battlefield, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. What you could also do is uh, later on for one black mana, and you would sacrifice this card to destroy a creature that has minus one, minus one counter on it. So are, are a lot of creatures minus one, minus one counters. Exactly. You could even put have it come in, put a minus one, minus one counter on some something, and then uh, sacrifice it to kill something else that already had a minus one, minus one counter previously put on it by something else. Uh, then we have a Lethal Sting for two and a black, so for three mana it's a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast Lethal Sting, we're going to put a minus one and minus one counter on target creature you control. So we've got to do it to our own creature, but we're also going to destroy target creature. So that's pretty sweet. We're going to destroy something, then we're going to put a minus one, minus one counter on something of ours. We're going to get a snake for that. All pretty sweet stuff. 
yeah, the minus one, minus one counter on one of your own creatures is not ideal, but still you get a snake for it, and you're gonna put it on something that's gonna be able to survive the damage. It's or damage the, the counter. counter, yeah. If you have a creature. Then we have Skin Render. For four mana, it's a three, three zombie. When it enters the battlefield, you can put three minus one, minus one counters on target creature. Yeah. That's Simple, good. That's probably gonna kill something. Yeah. Yeah, and it's good against uh, uh, creatures with uh, indestructible regenerate. Actually, all this minus one, minus one section is really good at removing creatures because yeah. it gets around so much protection stuff. Then we have Soul Snuffers for two and two blacks. So Over four mana, we get a Elemental Shaman. It's a three, three. When it enters the battlefield, we're gonna put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature. So it's not your, just your creature, not just their creatures. That also includes Soul Snuffer itself, which means that we're gonna be getting a ton of little snakies. Yes, you may say, okay, Hapatra is also gonna get a minus one, minus one counter. True, but she's a two, two, so she will survive that initial uh, minus one, minus one counter, and we will have a ton of little snakes. And not to mention all the tokens and utility creatures that will be destroyed because of this. Very good. Very good. Then we have Incremental Blight. For five mana, it's a sorcery, and we can put one, minus one, minus one counter on a creature. Then we put two on another creature, and then we put three on another creature. So you do need three targets for this. This, but normally you will have that in Commander. Yeah, and yeah, you get three snakes for it as well. Exactly. Then we come to, oh, to such a great card. I can imagine Hapatra riding this beetle into battle. It's Decimator Beetle for three, a black and a green. So for five mana, we get a five, a four, five insect. Pretty big, good deal for the for the amount of mana. Additionally, when it enters the battlefield, we're gonna put a minus one, minus one counter on target creatures you control. So once again, this is not ideal, but you can also put it on the beetle itself, making it a three, four, still nothing to sniff at, that's fine. Additionally, when this guy attacks, we're gonna be able to remove a minus one, minus one counter from target creature we control, and put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature a defending player control. So the one that, that it has to be on a creature that this creature is attacking. So that is super good. Why? Because it's going to be removing minus one, minus one counters that we put on our creatures, like for example, from Soul Snuffer or from the Decimator Beetle. And we're going to be putting minus one, minus one counters on our opponent's creatures, which is we're going to be using them to removing. And we're going to be getting snakes for that. Also, what's good to remember is that whenever this guy attacks, even if we have no minus one, minus one counters on our creatures anymore, we can still put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature defending player controls every time Decimator Beetle attacks. Super strong. Very really nice. Then we get to the big stuff. Carnifex Demon for six mana. It's a six-six flying demon, and when it enters, you, it enters with two minus one minus one counters. But for one black mana, you can remove one of those counters and put a minus one minus one counter on all other creatures. That's gonna be strong. Yeah, really yeah. strong. Especially if you got something that's gonna be able to keep putting minus one minus one counters back on Carnifex Demon, or you be able to keep on removing them and keep on putting uh, the minus one minus one counters on our opponent's creatures. Uh, I'm sorry, on each other creature yeah. all the time, which is going to be devastating. Very devastating. And of course, even if it doesn't have any counters anymore, it's still a 6 6 flyer. True. Nothing to sniff at. Then we go to Liliana's Influence for 4 and 2 blacks over 6 mana. It's a sorcery. And we're going to be putting a minus 1 minus 1 counter on each creature we don't control. So that's super nice. Apatra this time is safe from the minus 1 minus 1 counter. And all our opponents get, get a counter, which means we're going to get, be getting tons of snakes and they're all going to be smaller. It also has a clause that allows you to search for a particular planeswalker, but we don't have that planeswalker in this deck, so you might as well ignore that part. And then we go to the last one. For the counter cards. That is Midnight Banshee. For six mana, it's a 5-5 five, five spirit. It has Wither, so I think this should be in the Wither oh, section. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's, no in the, problem. that's in the Wither section. Okay, we're, no. we're on the Wither section. Really, really good. <laughs> and it states that at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a minus one, minus one counter on each non-black creature. Almost all your creatures are black, so it won't be a lot of your creatures. So that's really, really strong. Also, 5-5 five, five with Wither. It's yeah. Nice. It's, yeah. Spirit. it's actually in the right section because every mm -hmm. upkeep it puts a minus one, minus yeah. one counter on as well. Yeah, it also has Wither. I don't know. Awesome. It's in two sections. It's in two sections. Yeah. What you'll notice is with a lot of these cards, they're in multiple, multiple sections because a lot of these cards are doing double duty. But either way, Midnight Banshee is uh, pretty sweet because she does not put a counter, minus one, minus one counter on her Patra because she's black. Then we move on to the Wither cards. Uh, first one is Blight Sickle for two generic mana. It's an equipment for two, equipment, uh, equip cost, and it makes sure that equipped creature has plus one, plus zero, and has Wither. So this is very nice 
because of course you can equip it to a Patra, making her a 3-2 with Wither, so it makes it annoying because people, when you block with her, attack with it and deals damage, you're gonna be making a snake. That's all well and good, but usually what you're gonna be wanting to do is putting this on one of your death touch snakes. Why? Because if a death touch then attacks or blocks, It'll kill the opponent's creature because it has death touch and additionally the death touch damage will be with their damage so we'll put a minus one minus one counter on the creature and then uh, you're going to be getting another snake so it replaces itself. Exactly. Then we have Needle Spectre for three mana and so one one flying spectre with Wither of course and when it deals common damage to a player that player discards that many cards. Probably it won't be bigger maybe for the blight cycle but that's still really nice day really should block it, it has flying, so some evasion, so you could make your opponent discard cards, really yeah. annoying. Yeah. And if it doesn't, it also creates a snake for you, so it has a really, it has a lot of value. Yeah, yeah exactly. There are some ways to pump uh, creatures yeah. uh, in this deck, and then that is super nasty if you're hitting them and making them discard their whole hand. And of course, you know, as Rick said, even when it does trade, you're still getting a snake on top of that. And a way of making this card bigger is Tower Above for three green, or for every green, two generic. We get a sorcery until end of turn target creature we control gets plus four plus four and gains trample and wither and when this creature attacks target creature blocks it this turn if able so it's kind of removal uh if you let's say you just put it on one of your snakes then your your snake is a five five death toucher with trample plus a creature of your opponent that you desire has to block it you're going to kill it and then of course since it has wither it's going to replace itself again so it's very nasty then we have Obelisk Spider for three mana. It's a one four spider with reach. And when it deals combat damage to a creature, you put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. So that is Wither, uh, sort of. Sort of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whenever you put one or more uh, minus one, minus one counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So you're gonna put a lot of minus one, minus one counters on creatures with your other stuff. So you're gonna gain a lot of life. We're gonna make your opponents lose a lot of life. Exactly, leeching that away. Then we move on to the Infect cards. First one is Necropede for two generic. It's a 1-1 one, one Insect with Infect. Uh, remember that even in Commander, if you deal 10 points of Infect damage to your opponent, they are dead. Super unfair, we love it. When this guy is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we get to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So that's cool. So we're gonna be attacking with it, doing Infect damage. So people say, okay, I'm gonna block it this time because I'm sick of this Infect. It's gonna do infect damage, which means we get to put a minus one, minus one counter as, as damage, let's say. So we get a snake, and then when it dies, we get to put another minus one, minus one counter on something, and we get another snake. So that's a pretty good deal. A lot of value, yeah. again. Then we have Grafted Exoskeleton for four minus and equipment. Uh, it states that equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has infect. You can equip it for two mana, and when it becomes unattached from a permanent, you have to sacrifice that permanent. So that could be a problem, but mostly you put it on snakes and stuff. So exactly, yeah. It's gonna be okay. And you could even put it on Hapatra, knowing that you're gonna make it into a 4-4 effect, and then should somebody try to exile Hapatra, you can just, oh no, you can't do that in no, instant speed. No, 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 you can't do that. Just put it on a snake. All right, next we have Flesh Eater Imp for three and a black, so for four mana, we get a 2-2 flying infect. And additionally, this is the cool ability this guy's got. If we can sacrifice a creature and then this guy gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So what's really nice about that, of course, is sacrifice outlet. So in this case, yes, you're gonna be able to sacrifice Hapatra, for example, in response to it, uh, people wanting to exile it or some of your other good creatures, you don't want them to get exiled. And additionally, we've got a lot of ways to make tiny little snakes, but if you attack with this flying infect creature and all of a sudden sacrifice all the snakes and then you make this thing into a 10-10, then of course you can one hit kill your opponent. Exactly. Then we have Phyrexian Hydra for five mana. It's a seven-seven infect Hydra. It's really, really big. It's unfair, sort of. So it has uh, something else. If damage will be dealt to Phyrexian Hydra, you have to prevent that damage and put minus one, minus one counters on Phyrexian Hydra for each one of that damage you prevented. But they're gonna give you snakes, so that's not a problem. Doesn't matter, right? Sure. Pretty good deal as well. Phyrexian Swarmlord is the last one of the infect creatures for, for four and two green. So for six mana, we get a four, four infect creature. Additionally, at the beginning of our upkeep, we're gonna make a one, one green insect creature with infect for each poison counter our opponents have. So as we're already dealing a little bit of infect damage, then as long as this guy's on the battlefield, we're gonna be getting more and more of those guys, which is of course super, super nasty. Those are the effect. Actually, those are all the cards that you can be putting minus one, minus one counters on our cre opponent's creatures. Let's have a look at the support cards. We divided the support cards into unblockable cards, pump cards, and removal. 
The first one is Trailblazers Boots. For two mana it's an equipment and it says that equipped creature has non-basic land walk. Pretty simple, it's sort of unblockable. Most opponents will have a non-basic land. And you can equip it for two mana. Yeah. Next we have Prowler's Helm for two generic. It's also an equipment. It says the equipped creature can't be blocked except by walls and it's gonna equip a uh, cost of two. So once again, people are not, not a lot of people are gonna have walls and even if somebody would have a wall, not all players will have a wall. True. Then we have Whisper Silk Cloak for three mana, also an equipment, and it gives the creature you equip it with uh, Shroud and Unblockable. So it can't be targeted. Also not by your own spells. Yeah, that's important. This equips, yeah, equips for two mana. Then we go on to the pump uh, cards. These are not traditionally uh, gonna pump everything or one specific thing or give special abilities. It's kind of a mix. It's kind of ways to make your team better. First one is Elder of Laurels for two and a green. So for three mana, we get a two, three human advisor with an ability that states that for four mana, we can give target creature plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is the number of creatures we control. Naturally, we're making a lot of one, one little snakies. And it's cool to, for example, give uh, our infect creature plus X plus X and of course if we have eight mana we could do this twice and the best thing about this is that it's instant speed ability which means that we can attack with the whole team and then our opponent has to choose how they're gonna block and then we're gonna say okay the one that's not blocked that's the one we're gonna pump to get extra damage or the one you blocked that you thought you were gonna kill that thing now my thing is extra big and I get to and I get to trade in a way that's uh, unfortunate for you so it's really really strong Really, really nice. Then we have a card with two uh, parts. It's an Aftermath card. It's Driven and Despair. Driven states that for two mana at sorcery speed, you can give your creatures Trample, and when they do combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card for each creature that comes through. And then the Aftermath, and when it's in your graveyard for two mana at sorcery speed, uh, creatures you can give creatures you control Menace, and whenever they deal combat damage, then your opponents discard a card. So it's sort of the other way around or something. Yeah. Yeah. So driven to despair something, you're always gonna be playing both of them together in the same turn. So yeah. you're gonna be able to do a successful attack with let's say five creatures uh, for just four mana, making sure all five of those have menace and trample and you draw a card for each one of those damage and they have to discard a card. The, the swing is just yeah. insane. Yeah, It's insane, it's a beautiful card. Then we move on to Overwhelming Stampede for three and two green. So for five mana, it's a sorcery until the end of turn. Target creature you control gains trample. All, tar uh, all creatures you control gain trample. And plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Which is really nice because, of course, all our snakes are very small, but we do have a couple of creatures that are very big or creatures that can be pumped. And then with this card, we can pump the rest of the team. And of course, having a bunch of five, five death touchers is nothing to yeah. sniff at when they're going to yours or face. This is one, one hit, yeah, one hit kill. Then we have Thunderfoot Ballad for six mana. It's a five, five trample beast and it has Lieutenant. So when you have your commander, it does something. And what it does is give all other creatures and itself plus two, plus two and uh, trample. Yeah, nice. All those, uh, those one, one death touches are now three, three death touches with trample. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't may not seem like a lot, but it's really, it's really good. and plus people don't want to block them because they, because they're going to lose their creatures anyway. So it's all bad stuff for them. All right, move on to the removal cards. First one, Viridian Longbow for generic mana. Equipped creature has tap, deals one point of damage to target creature or player. The equip cost is three. It may seem a bit hefty, but essentially for what, what counts as four mana, we're gonna be able to make our death touchers kill a creature of our opponents every single turn. And if we have extra mana, we can of course put it on a death toucher, tap, kill something, over equip to another death toucher, tap, kill. It can get out of hand really fast. Yeah, it's three mana per kill and it doesn't cost you a card yeah. later on. So it's really, really bad for your opponents. Yeah. Then we have Ulvenwald Tracker for one mana, it's a one, one. And it states that for two mana you can tap it and then the target creature you control fights another target creature. So you do damage equal to their power to each other. And you do that on a dead touch, of course, against something really big. Yeah, exactly. Only really uh, Shroud and Hexproof will protect people from these of things course. or the creatures. Next, we have Golgari Charm for a black and a green. It's an instant. We can choose one of three things. First one is all creatures get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn. Okay, we don't use that one very often because, of course, our snakes are one, one. Uh, we can also destroy target enchantment. That comes up quite often. And we can also regenerate each creature we control as a third option. That is super nice because this deck gets out of hand really fast and people are going to want to give you, are going to want to cast board wipes. And of course, Golgari Charm allows us to protect our creatures in that case. 
Yeah, true. Then we have Viridian Corruptor for 3 mana, it's a 2 2 elf shaman with infect, so it also has infect. But removal is more important. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifacts. So some yeah. artifact removal. Exactly. As you see here, cards doing pulling double yeah. duty in this uh, in this deck. Another card that does that is Putrefy for a generic, a black, and a green. So for three mana, it's an instant. We're going to be able to destroy target creature or sorry or artifact, and also won't be able to be regenerated, which is pretty sweet. The next one is Wicker Bow Elder for four mana. It's a four four three three folk shaman. And it enters the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter on it. And for one green mana, we can remove one of those counters to destroy an artifact or enchantment. If you put more than more minus one minus one counters on this, we can do that multiple times. That's yeah, really bad. This is such a strong card because yeah. people are gonna have their mana rocks and they got their cool enchantments. And basically being able to put minus one minus one counters from other sources onto this guy and every turn paying a green and saying, hey, that thing's blown up, that thing's blown up, that thing's blown up. It's just it's so oppressive and yeah. I love it. Uh, and then and if, you, if you don't do that at the end, it's still 4 4. So, for good stuff. Then the final of the removal cards is Vati Ildal for two generic, a black and a green. So, for four mana, we have a 3 3. And this guy can tap to make target creatures' power or toughness become one until the end of turn. So, you can have an, an our opponent can have a very nice 6 6. And of course, what we can do is we can put a minus one, minus one counter on it with, with, some, with Hapatra or some other ability. And then we just tap. This guy, and then we say, okay, your guy's got one toughness now, and it dies because of the counter. That's rough. That is super rough. Okay, those are the support cards. Let's have a look at the utility cards. We divided the utility cards into proliferate cards, so these ones allow us to put more counters on permanence, and synergy cards. These are the cards that really work well with the overall strategy of this deck. So the first card is Contagion Class for two generic. When it enters the battlefield, we're gonna be able to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Nice, with Hapatra we get another Snakey. And we can also pay four mana, tap it and proliferate, which means we're gonna be able to choose any number of permanents and or players, and we're gonna be able to put a counter on them of the same counter that's already on it. So in this case, it's gonna be all minus one, minus one counters. We're gonna be able to put multiple of those, an, an additional one, which is gonna be multiple minus one, minus one counters overall. Very nice. Then we have Spread the Sickness for 5 mana. It's a sorcerer that destroys target creature and proliferates. Yeah, so once again, it's removal and additionally also putting minus one, minus one counters if they're already on there, multiple. Uh, Plague Maw Beast for 3 and 2 greens. So for 5 mana, we get a 4 3 guy, Beast, and we're able to tap it and sacrifice a creature to proliferate. So this is again, it's a sacrifice outlet. It's doing that, plus it's also making sure we'll be able to put more minus one, minus one counters on stuff. So it's pulling double duty as well. Then we move on to the synergy cards. The first one is Quest for Renewal. It's two mana enchantment, and it says that uh, uh, whenever a creature you control becomes tapped, it gets a quest counter, and when there are four or more quest counters on Quest for Renewal, you get to untap all creatures you control during each um, player, other player's untap step. So each turn you get to untap everything. You can just uh, attack with all your death touchers and then also defend with them each turn. Yeah, and of course we've got some creatures that tap for, for example, mana. Uh, we're gonna be able to use those every single turn. Or for example, a card like Skirk's Dag High Priest for one and a black. So for two mana, we get a one, two human cleric with morbid, which means that if a creature has died this turn, then we're able to tap this guy and tap two other untapped creatures we control. And we're gonna put a 5-5 demon onto the battlefield with flying. So that is of course super nice. We have sack outlets in this deck. We've got of course people killing each other's stuff in this deck and being able to every turn uh, tap it and then getting a, a demon. Of course, we're gonna have many little yeah. one one uh, snakes so we can use those additional ones to tap it is of course super, super strong. Uh, and of course, with Quest for Renewal, being able to do that in everybody's turn is gets out of hand really quick. Yeah, you do need Morbid, of course, each yeah. turn, but well, you should have that. Then we have Zulaport Cutthroat. It's for two mana, it's a human rogue ally. It's a 1-1. One, one. And uh, it says that uh, basically whenever a creature you control dies, this one or another creature, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Yeah, that's what happens when people try and get rid of your snakies. They start to lose life. Then we have Nest of Scarabs for two and a black. So for three mana, it's an enchantment. It states that whenever we put uh, one or more minus one, minus one counters on a creature, we're gonna create that many one, one black insect creature tokens. So where Hapatra says, okay, every time you put one or more minus one, minus one counters, you get a snake. 
This one says, okay, for as many minus one, minus one kinds you put on, that's how many uh, one, one black insects you get to put. So they don't have depth touch, but they make for pretty good blockers. And with the pumping, we don't really care because we will make them big and attack them with them anyway. Yeah. Then we have Ivy, Ivy Lane Denizen for four mana. It's a two, three elf warrior. And it says that whenever a gr another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Uh, so that cancels out minus one, minus one counters. I know somebody is going to tell us we're wrong, but we're not. We're right. It really cancels them out. Look it up in the rules. Uh, you can't have a plus one pounder and a minus one counter yeah. on a creature. It cancels. Yeah, and then they're both removed. Exactly. exactly. So this is a nice little insurance against stuff that puts minus one, minus one counters on our own stuff. And additionally, just every time that a snake comes in, it's going to be a 2 2 death touch snake. Not bad. Next, we have something against those flyers. We've got a raking canopy for one generic and two green. So for three mana, it's an enchantment that states that whenever a creature with flying attacks you, so only you, they can attack each other all they want. But whenever it attacks you, raking canopy deals four damage to it. As you know, flyers are usually four or less. Mo I'm sure you have a few dragons that are five, and of course you got Nico balls, which is seven. But usually you're gonna have your flyers are gonna be four or less, which means that it's gonna make people it's gonna make it impossible for people to attack you with flyers. And naturally, it's already already impossible for people to attack you with just walking guys because you have death touch snakes. True. Then we have Sandworm Convergence, also some insurance against flyers because we don't have a lot against that, so we need something. And it's just for eight mana, it's an enchantment, and it says that creatures with flying can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, but that doesn't really matter in this deck. And it also says at the beginning of your end step, create a 5-5 five, five green worm creature token. So each turn we get worms. Yeah, why not, right? Why not? Could add, be. Add insult yeah. to injury. They, they kill those birds. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. They do it, they jump in the air. Anyway, those are the synergy cards from the utility. So let's have a look at the cards that give us value. We divided the value cards into draw, recursion and ramp cards. The first one is Vampiric Rites. For one mana it's an enchantment and for two mana uh, of one black you can sacrifice a creature and then you gain a life and draw a card. So it's also a sacrifice outlet and drawing cards is really nice. Yeah exactly, I don't mind uh, uh, sacrificing one of those little snakes to get me another card and a life. A card is very similar, that's Evolutionary Leap for a generic and a green. So for two mana, that's an enchantment, and we can pay a green to sacrifice a creature, like for example, one of our snakes, or maybe one of our cool creatures that's about to get exiled. And then we're gonna reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card. That card, we're gonna be able to put it into our hand, and we're gonna put the rest of the cards that we revealed at the bottom of our library in any order, in a random order. So this is very nice because, again, it draws you a card. It's gonna, it has to be a creature though, will draw you a card, but it also, uh, it's also for very cheap, it's just for one green. That's all we need to keep open. Yeah, that's nice. Then we have Dark Prophecy for three black mana. It's, it's kind of a steep cost, you need three black. But this is worth it. It's a really creepy card though. Uh, and stated, whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. So they, if they kill your creatures, they're gonna have a problem. But if they don't, they're also gonna have a problem. Exactly. You're gonna attack them. Yeah, this is great when uh, when they want to kill individual creatures. But it's also great when you sacrifice your snakes because it doesn't say non-token creature. And almost all cards like this say non-token creature. This one does not, which means that all our snakes become draws. Yeah. Then we move on to Life Crafter's Best Cherry for three mana. It's an artifact. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Don't forget to do that. It's very easy to forget that because you put the artifact down and stuff. But every turn we get to scry, which is the equivalent of half a draw. Additionally, whenever you cast a creature spell, you can pay one green. And if you do draw a card, so essentially all those creatures that you're playing, this deck is quite heavy with the creatures. So all those creatures you're playing, just make sure you pay one extra green and they all replace themselves with a draw, which is very strong. Yeah, then we have Greed for four mana, it's an enchantment, and it says that for one black mana and you have to pay two life, you get to draw a card. You can do that multiple times a turn. Yeah, that, that's not to be underestimated. True. Uh, Death Reap Ritual for two, a black and a green, so for four mana we get an enchantment with Morbid once again. So if a creature has died this turn, then at the beginning of, of the end step, you get to draw a card. So it's not only your end step, but everybody's end step, which of course means that if you're playing uh, yourself with three other opponents, you could be getting four draws every go around. True. Then we have for seven mana, Zendikar Resurgent, for it's an enchantment, and it says that whenever you tap a land for mana, you add one additional mana of the color that produced to your mana pool. And also says that whenever you cast a creature spell, you can draw a card. 
Mm. So when you cast creature spells, they are cheaper or sort of you have extra mana. You also draw a card so you can play another one. That's great value, if you will. Sure. That's great. Anyway, okay, I'm sorry. I'll stop. All right, we got. Then we move on to the recursion cards. First one is Ferection Reclamation for a single black. It's an enchantment, and we can pay a generic, a black, and two life, and then return target creature card from our graveyard back to our hand. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really good. What else do you want to say about it? It's it, no, that's it. Yeah, no. it's instant speed as well, which means you can do it at the end of our opponent's uh, turn before our turn, and then surprise them with something we're going to cast they weren't expecting. True. Then we have. For five mana, Puppeteer Cleek. It's a fairy wizard with flying. It's a three, three, two. And when it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It has haste, and at the end step, you have to exile it. So that's anything. And it also has persist, so when it dies, it comes back with a minus one, minus one counter, and it does that again. So it will be a two, one. And if you manage to remove that counter, you can actually do it each turn. Pretty cool. Pretty nice. That's nice. Then we have a Creeping Renaissance for three and two greens so for five mana. It's a sorcery. Choose a permanent type. I'm going to return all cards of that type from our graveyard back to our hand. And it's got flashback for seven. This is actually really cool because it's a creature heavy deck, which means we're usually we're going to be saying creature, which means that for this one card, we're going to be getting tons and tons of cards back from our graveyard. Nice. Then the last of the recursion cards, it's Gleam Crawler for 6 mana, it's a 6-6 six, six Trample Insect Horror. And at the beginning of your end step you get to return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So that means this has to survive, so it ensures that they have to remove this one first before they remove your other creatures. Exactly, and of course uh, what's cool is that with all the sacrifice outlets that we have, we can of course um, sacrifice a creature, it can die, and then at the end of our turn, we're going to get that creature back as long as Glean Clawler is back on the battlefield. Nice little extra value. Mm. Then we move on to the ramp cards. The first one is Plague Mirror for two generic mana. We get a 1 1 creature with infect, and additionally, can also tap for a colorless mana. And we have Palladium Mirror for three mana, it's a 2 2 mirror, and it can tap for two uh, generic mana. Yeah. Then we have Findhorn Elder for two and a green, so for three mana, it's a one one, and we can tap it for two green mana. Then we have Nantuko Elder for three mana, it's a one two insect root, and you can tap it for a uh, generic and uh, green mana. Yeah, like colorless mana. Sorry. Yeah, very good. Then we have Green Weaver, <laughs> Green Weaver Druid for two and a green. You see a pattern here; they're all very yeah. similar. Green Weaver Druid for two and a green. So for three mana, it's a one one, and we can tap it for two green mana. So as you see, these are all cards that come down on turn three. Why? Because turn two we want to put down Hapatra, and they give us two mana, which is actually much more than we would normally get for mana rocks of the same cost. And additionally, when we have something like Quest for Renewal out, we're going to be able to un uh, untap them at the beginning uh, of everybody's untapped phase. So that's pretty sweet. Then we have From Beyond for four mana. It's an enchantment uh, with the void, so it has no color. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a 1-1 one, one, uh, Eldrazi Cyan creature token into, onto the battlefield. You can set that creature to uh, gain one colorless mana. You can also sacrifice from beyond to search your library for an Eldrazi card and put it into your hand. Yeah, but it, we don't have no. that. So, so just ignore that, uh, that section. But yeah. the most important thing is it's just going to give us a little guy every single time. So those are the ramp cards. Let's have a look at the lands. We divided the lands into 10 swamps, 14 forests, and 15 non-basic lands. Let's start with the first non-basic, that's Grasping Dunes. It's a desert. Uh, it taps for a colorless mana, and additionally, we can pay a generic and tap it and sacrifice it to put a, one, a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. However, we can only do this as a sorcery, so not instant speed. Still, it's a little land that later on in the game can uh, kill something or put it something, so make something smaller and give us a little snake. Then we have Ifnir Deadlands, it's a desert, for, uh, you can tap it for a colorless mana. You can also tap it and pay one life to get a, a black mana. But the third ability is uh, well, most interesting, it's for four mana, you can tap it and sacrifice it, or another desert, we have two of those, the last one is also a desert. And then we put two minus one minus one cards on target creature and opponent controls. Also just sorcery speed. Cool, kill something, get a snake. Mm -hmm. Not bad for a land. Then we have Rogue's Passage. It uh, taps for a colorless. And additionally for four mana and tapping this, we're gonna be able to make target creature unblockable this turn. That's of course extra nasty with the infect creatures we've got. Yeah. Then we have Opal Palace. We get to tap it for a colorless mana. We can also uh, 
use a mana and tap it to get a mana of any color in our commander's color identity. So that's two colors in this case. And if we spend it to cast the commander, the commander enters with a plus one plus one counter on it. So if you pay actually in ascension, essentially one additional mana, then our commander will be uh, three three. Yeah, exactly. And of course, every time that it comes back from the command zone, it's going to be bigger. So it's pretty sweet. And of course, those plus one plus one counters will cancel out any minus one minus one counters that we put on it later. Then we have Grim Backwoods. It also taps for a colorless. And additionally, you can pay two generic, a black and a green. So for four mana and tapping it and sacrificing a creature, we draw a card. So once again, this is a mana source, but it's also a sacrifice outlet. And it's also a source of draw. Then we have Orin Reef the Vastwood. Uh, it enters tapped. And it, it taps for one green mana later on, but you can also tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each green creature and enter the battlefield this turn. Yeah, you're gonna want to hold on to this one and then uh, start putting those snakes on the battlefield. Yeah. Pretty nice. Then we have Golgari Guildgate comes in tapped, but gives us a black or a green mana, which is the same as Foul Orchard. Then we have Jungle Hollow, it also just does the same, but this time around it gives you one life when it enters. Yeah, then we have Tainted Wood. This one does not come in tapped. It gives us a colorless mana, but it does. Uh, it has the ability to give us black or green mana if we control a swamp. Mostly we will, of course. Yeah. Then we have Golgari Rot Farm. It enters the battlefield tapped, but you need to put a land or put a land, uh, return a land from your from the battlefield to your hand. But it's, it taps for one black and one green mana. So yeah. it's actually sort of a uh, card draw. Yeah, pretty sweet. Then we have Vivid Grove and Vivid Marsh. They come in tapped. Uh, the Vivid Grove taps for green. The Vivid Marsh taps for a black. But they also come in with two count charge counters. And of course, you can tap it and remove a charge counter to give us mana of any color. Then we have Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wild. They do the same. They enter, you can uh, tap them and sacrifice them right away. Then you get to search your library for a basic land card, so swamp or a forest, and put it onto the battlefield. Yeah. Tapped. Super nice. Those are the lands. Let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, this deck is a lot of fun. Boy, do I love playing with Hapatra. Hapatra is such a strong deck because the minus one, minus one counters are a great form of removal. It's a very grindy deck. You're gonna be getting a lot of incremental value. You're gonna be getting more draw. You're gonna be getting more mana. You're gonna be getting uh, than everybody else. Uh, the snakes make sure that nobody wants to attack you on the ground. You've got a few ways to make sure that nobody wants to attack you in the air. Uh, every card has multiple roles, multiple purposes, which means, of course, the categorization you saw already, that was very difficult to do because every card does multiple things, which means it's very versatile. You always got an answer for something. And finally, it's just a lot of fun to have a big army and not to mention the infect creatures, which are also a nice little alternative way to uh, win the game against uh, lifelink, uh, life-linked creatures, for example. Yeah, it like has a life gain deck. It's yes. really strong when you have in fact, of course. Uh, what's really nice about the deck, it has a lot of removal, a lot of really strong removal also against uh, stuff like indestructible and regenerate. And you can just remove that. Uh, so it gives your opponents a, a, a lot of uh, issues they have to deal with. They're going to have a lot of problems, especially yeah. creature heavy decks. Yeah are gonna get problems against this deck. Yeah, and even then, what's, what's very uh, nice about this deck is that it, it's very explosive. It starts out super fast. I mean, turn two, you're already putting down Hapatra. Turn three, you're already putting down minus one, minus one cards. You're getting snakes, you're getting more snakes. And by turn five, turn six, you're already amassing such a smart, uh, such a large army. And people have to wipe the board, but because of all the cards that draw you extra cards and give you extra mana, it's gonna be very easy for you to get back into the game should somebody wipe the board at that point in time. And of course, Hapatra only costs two mana, so casting again for four is really not an issue, and recasting again for six is also not that much of an issue either. So it's a card, it's a deck that keeps on coming back, which is of course very uh, apt for yeah. a Golgari deck. Yeah, it, it, has, it has ways to deal with aggro decks, because well, when you put something down and it can be removed and keeps on putting minus one, minus one counters on small creatures, your okay, aggro opponent is going to have a problem, but it's also strong against a little slow, m more slower, slower decks because it keeps on doing great stuff and also has a more value later on when you keep on growing your your army, your enchantments, your artifacts, your creatures. Yeah, they're going to get more problems. Exactly. So good. And for such a, a deck with so much value, it's pretty affordable too, right? Yeah, it's below thirty-five dollars. We did the math on MagicCards.info, so we used all the medium prices. 
uh, well, they compare our prices for Magic cards from a lot of sites, so you can really, really get this deck, including Commander, including all lands for below $35. Exactly. And if you like this deck, you like this video, want us to make more, consider going over to patreon.com slash budgetmtg decks, becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. You'll be helping us out so much we can make more of these videos, so we'd really appreciate it. Just check that out. Also join us on Facebook and Twitter at BudgetMTGDex. We have discussions about this deck, about upcoming sets, whatever you wanna do, just talk to us over there on the socials. And of course, subscribe to us here on YouTube so we're for the most powerful decks and advice everyone can afford. Also, when you do subscribe to us, don't forget to hit the little bell button on the side because then you'll get a notification when a new video comes out. If you hit subscribe, but you don't hit the little bell button, you don't get notified. I don't know why that is, that's just a rule. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm David. And I'm Rich. And this was Budget MTG Decks.